I'm Bevy Smith, and I'm here with Soledad O'Brien, and we are going to disrupt and dismantle the future of police reform. Soledad, let's get into Chicago. Mm, that's a good place to start, yes, isn't it? it is. Unfortunately, <laughs> so much money, millions of dollars, have been paid out by the city of Chicago to cover police misconduct. So clearly that means they need some police reform if only just to save a lot of money. Which brings me to one of the big discussions that we've been having in 2020 and into 2021. Uh, defunding the police, abolish the police. I asked everybody when we went to Chicago, like, what does defund the police mean? And, and for every single person you asked, they have a different version of what they believe that that phrase means. They saw defund the police as take away from the police money that could go better used to people who are dealing with mental health issues. Make sure that you are making the police pay for some of these misconduct costs. We have to talk about the idea of the thin blue line. What exactly is that? I think there's a sense that the police will support each other always through thick and thin. And actually what we were doing in Chicago, right, was talking to a woman named Anjanette Young. She was a woman who was naked for about 20 minutes yeah. uh, while the police performed a raid on her apartment. They were in the wrong apartment, right? But in both and of those- And she kept trying to tell them that they were in the wrong apartment. And they told her to relax. They tore down a door with a battering ram. Right, so that, a door. Or, that is already incredibly violent. They offer her no assistance. They handcuff her, hands behind her back, and put a jacket over her shoulders, which of course keeps falling off yeah. because she's handcuffed. I mean, talk about just feeling like, wow, no one even sees me as a human being standing here. I'm standing yeah. here naked. There are people in my apartment searching for a guy who's not here. And there's not a soul who says, yeah. let's get her, let's let her get dressed. Let's put a shirt on her. That I think was incredibly upsetting for her. Yeah. I know that you've seen horrific things over the, the years of your career, but why did that interview really get to you? A lot of these stories across the board that we're doing in these series, right, are, are seeing people as less than, especially if they're poor, especially if they're black. And she said to me, you know, I know, if this happened. were a white woman, this never would have happened. And I, I do not disagree with her. They now have a black female mayor. And I think that when she was elected mayor, people were like hopeful because it's like, oh, we've got a black woman in the house, okay. And yet it seems that Lori Lightfoot did not fight to have the, the video released to her. And then they also tried to sue her because she talked about the case and that was going against a confidentiality agreement that she had signed, correct? Her team also tried to stop the local news media from talking about the case. But you know, I, I think the bigger issue for me in all of this is in many of these cases, it's not about an individual. These systems are often the status quo and they come from the Jim Crow era. They come from slavery and the roots of slavery, right? So- Policing, certainly. Policing specifically, yeah. absolutely. And so I think in the community, they're trying to rethink ways in which you can actually have police serve and protect the community. Well, also too, in, in Chicago and in many other large cities, we have the problem where the police are literally bust in. They come in from the outside, they're there, they don't really know anybody, they don't really trust anybody, and the feeling is mutual. I don't think that is a way to have a safe and good and healthy community. So if there's any silver lining in what was a very terrible summer of unrest, right, was that I think you saw a lot of the people protesting against police violence. It was a very diverse crowd. So collective action. If you look back at the civil rights era, right, let's look at the 50s and 60s, what really brought about change was not just a march and not just a speaker, but also it was uh, legal efforts, right? And it was group on the ground grassroots efforts. And I think it's really important to remember that all of these happening at the same time collectively is what brings about change. And it's good that corporations like P&G really did take the initiative and say we are going to be real allies and not just throw money at the problem. The most important and powerful thing that anybody can do, right, is to be a convener of a conversation, yes. to really discuss what is happening and what change can come about and to help bring about those coalitions of people who want to see positive change in their communities. Indeed, disrupt and dismantle. Learn more about how P&G is stepping up to make lasting systemic changes to positively impact our communities and how you can help.